All right, so now that we've talked about the basics of why you might consider using lasers in your stage lighting, and if you haven't checked out that video, check it out here. We, had, we did it last week. Um, now I want to talk about the safety requirements and, and uh, what you basically got to do to make a laser show happen. Uh, because unlike a moving light or an LED or some speakers, you can't just set this up and get rolling. However, uh, I think you'll find once you kind of get into the habit of these simple steps, it's actually really not that difficult to stay compliant. And the effects that you get from lasers in your lighting, I think, can easily be worth it. So, as we've discussed in previous videos, the first thing that you need in the U.S. in order to operate a laser is a variance, okay? Now, the, the details on this is that there's a certain power threshold, um, those DJ-style lasers that you'll find from ADJ, Chave, Blizzard, and, and people like that are going to fall under these thresholds and aren't going to require a variance. But if you want to step it up to the big boys and get something that you can actually see in a room that's not completely dark, such as these lasers uh, from Laser Cube or X Laser, um, there's other people that sell them too, then you're going to need to step it up and get a laser variance. What is a variance? A variance is basically like a driver's license for lasers. It shows that you've said you know how to operate a laser safely and you agree to do so. Um, and that's about all that it says. Uh, when you get your variance from the FDA, it's basically uh, approving you to use lasers above a certain a power threshold and to use them safely. This doesn't mean that you automatically can't get into trouble if you disobey the rules and this doesn't mean that um, you're you're protected by the government or anything like that. It's required. It's a driver's license. You've got to get it. How do you get it? Well, it's a little bit of a complicated process and uh, my best recommendation is just going through X Laser if you're going to buy a laser anyways or rent one. They have packages that are really inexpensive, they walk you right through it, and they have an expedited service that makes it quicker to be able to apply for a variance instead of uh, the usual time frame, which can be quite long, could be almost a year. I got mine, I think it was about eight weeks, and that was around Christmas time. So, you know, give or take, it, it, uh, it's able to maybe go a little quicker than that. Once you get your variance in hand, however, there are some things you need to do to ensure laser safety. We talked about this in a previous video that one of the keys of lasers is that you don't point them at the sky and you don't point them in people's eyes and including the eyes of cameras, okay, including security cameras. So when you're figuring out a show, you need to go ahead and draw out ahead of time the venue where the laser is going to sit, where it's going to point, and ensure that you're not going to hit any of those things. Not only that, part of the, the portion of not hitting people's eyes is that you want to keep your laser uh, 3 meters or about 9 feet away from any surface that an audience member could stand on. Okay, and so um, that can be a little ambiguous, but note that it's audience member and could stand on. You just got to keep it above people's heads. Uh, folks on stage who are watching and who you've taught to be safe about lasers may be able to be a little closer to that, but you always got to be watching for safety. Again, um, as I've mentioned before, this video is not a complete safety guide to lasers. Uh, this video does not certify you to use lasers or anything like that. However, Xlaser, um, who I think is a great resource, has a number of training videos. They're even here on YouTube, and I'll link to them here, that walk you through all of the basics of laser safety. This is just really designed to give you an overview over what you need to do on a daily basis when, when you're running a laser or lasers and how to integrate them into your show. Once you've got your variants in hand and you've got a plan set forth onto how you're going to execute this safely, you need to follow a lot of the same basic things uh, that you do when setting up a light. You need to make sure the laser's mounted securely, that it's set up properly, and then there are a variety of safety features that uh, you can use with lasers that basically allow you to have multiple methods of being able to cut the laser off in case of an emergency, and you'll test those. And also, uh, you're going to want to make sure that 
the safety zones are respected. And what that basically means is your laser is able to shoot um, quite possibly a wide and tall distance and into areas where people will be. That doesn't mean you can't use it, but what it does mean is that you need to use aluminum beam blocking tape uh, as well as physical beam blocks that may be on the laser itself and set those so that physically, even if in your lighting console you've got the laser not going into those areas, that physically you're able to go ahead and, and ensure that that laser can't go into those areas on a physical basis. Of course, as we talked about, you're going to have methods for shutting off the laser. Okay, you're going to have multiple methods of doing this. And so if something were to happen, if it were to creep into an area where it's not supposed to be, boom, you can shut it off. And until you can remedy the problem, keep that laser off. The last thing on the safety front, and again, this is a brief overview, not a complete guide, is that you need to go ahead and have laser warning signs ready to go. Uh, in a lot of live performance situations, especially where, you know, the lasers may be shooting overhead, you may or may not need to use them. But it's generally a good idea to tell people who are in the audience that there will be lasers, just like you often tell people before shows about strobe lights and fog effects. Just put lasers in those same messaging. In addition, if there's anywhere on stage that people may be able to get closer to the laser than in the audience, then you'll want to post signs there and make sure everyone who's going to be on the stage understands to stay away from areas that you've marked off on stage. Awesome. With that, guys, I know that can seem like a lot. It can seem heavy. But truth be told, you know, all of these things that I just talked about really don't take that much time to enable on a show day. And the effects that you can get from a laser, I think, can be worth it for some folks' shows. Again, this isn't for everybody, but if you've got some lights you want to add more, uh, you know, these things are really easy to do, especially just as a note, if you're in a permanent facility, right? If you're in a theater or the same venue or a church and you're, you're setting this up permanently or semi-permanently, uh, these checklist steps start to become really pretty quick to get through because a lot of the things haven't changed from the day before. So with that, guys, we're going to be doing more about lasers. Now that we got safety out of the way, we get to talk about control how to control these things, how to get control of our lasers, and how to make these cool things, whether it be words, images, aerial scanning, moving light type effects. We're going to talk about all of that in our next video. I'll see you there. Thanks.